Call this July 6th Brown County Commission meeting to order. Commissioner Sutton, would you the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've got a, a quiet bunch today. <laughs> First item, approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Thousand, second by Weiss to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is approved. Next thing, public hearing on liquor license transfer. That was a transfer for, I believe, uh, Stacy Gosman for... Not so person. Not so person. Yep. Moved. Second. Moved by Weiss, second by Sutton uh, to approve the liquor license transfer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I guess we can go on to the next. Next thing we have the South Dakota Public Assurance Alliance Board membership nomination. Uh, this would be a resolution of support for board member Mike Weiss. How long is your term, Mike? Uh, are three-year terms. I've been a board member for several terms, and I actually serve right now as board chairman. Second year of a three-year run of that, as long as I stay on that board. I would move approval. Second. We have a motion by Sutton, a second by Kipley, to approve the uh, resolution of support for Commissioner Weiss to be on the South Dakota Public Health Insurance Alliance Board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'll abstain. Thank you. Thank you for serving on that board. Sure. Do you Good represent morning. South Dakota counties or how does that work? The board is made up of nine memberships plus the uh, Yvonne Taylor and now Chris yep. as board members, but it's basically split up according to kind of the, the membership. So three are from counties and six are from municipalities, okay. but it's a cross section of elected officials, uh, uh, appointed officials, uh, loss control people, just a whole mix of things. We actually have one board member that's coming off this year that's not coming back on Jim Dorsey from here on. For, so we're looking for a replacement to try and have a diversity of geography as well as different functions within sure. local governments. I know I've been to board meetings, but I just don't remember the makeup of the yeah. board and mm -hmm. who you represent exactly. Yeah, I no, appreciate the question. Jeanette, you got just a couple minutes. We're going to do just sure. a couple of years and we'll get on to the next one in a couple minutes. Okay. First one is to approve the general general meeting minutes of last week, June 29, 2021. Second. Move by Kipley, second by Fiker to approve the general meeting minutes of June 29th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Claims and payroll. Move. Okay. Move by Sutton. Second by Weiss to approve plans and payroll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. HR report. Move. Okay. Move by Sutton. Second by Weiss to approve the HR report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. V6. Move. Aye. Aye. Move by Kipley. Second by Fiker to approve the leases. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Sheriff's report. Move. Second. Move by Sutton. Second by Weiss to approve the sheriff's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Last one is lottery permit. Move. Second. Move by Piker. Second by Kipley to approve the lottery permits. I believe there was two of them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That'll be oh. it. Okay. It looks like uh, the next item we have uh, Kathy McNichol, the auditor, election equipment purchase. No ink poll pads. Yeah, our current election equipment is getting outdated and um, we purchased it from Secretary of State in 2014 and they purchased them, I'm guessing, in 12 or 13. So they're fairly old computers. Our poll workers have also been putting in requests and comments to us that the computers are really slow and they would like some new equipment. So we've been looking around over the last couple months at different vendors. And what I'm recommending today is going with the no ink pull pad. We have one here. We've had this in our office for the last couple months with our 2020 primary election loaded on it. 
So we gave it some rigorous testing, and we did the same testing on it that we would do for a normal election, making sure that all the different um, types and qualifications of voters are in there. You can scan the driver's license, or you can manually search a name. You can um, if you manually search your name, it records the type of ID and if the ID is um, expired, not expired, and it tracks all that information for us. It also tracks absentee, so if somebody has voted absentee, the poll pad will let us know and it will stop them from processing the voter. Um, so it's compliant with South Dakota law. It meets our standard that we currently use for poll books. It is um, no ink, actually recently purchased our current voter registration software vendor, so we know it's going to be compatible. Sioux Falls School District recently used it at an election. Hagen County used it last year in 2020, and um, Lincoln County is using it this month for a small election that they're having as well. So it's been tested in South Dakota, and um, I talked with a Hankin County former auditor, and she had no problems at all with the poll pads and highly recommended them. When we did a cost analysis over two um, federal election cycles, which is eight years. We are looking at our overall cost savings of $40,000 by purchasing this equipment versus going with the current equipment and um, licensing fees that we currently pay. Did you guys have any questions or anything? The uh, storage for that and all the record keeping, does that go into our system then in case down the road yep, somebody? It, yep, it's compatible with our voter registration system. So we'll upload from our voter registration system onto the poll pad, and then we'll upload from the poll pad back onto the voter registration system. And then on election day, there's a dashboard that we'll have access to and it will show us all the activity on all the poll pads countywide. So we can see if one has a printer malfunctioning, if one gets disconnected from the internet. We'll see that before they even give us a call. Yep. Now the physical size and convenience of this has mm -hmm. got to be a real self factor yes. too. Um, it's so easier to handle and maneuver. Yeah, maneuver I didn't on. bring what we currently have, but I would say it's one third of the size of what we currently use. And the printer is actually backed behind Jeanette there. It's Bluetooth, so we don't have any cords or anything like that anymore. Whereas we currently have to have hmm. extension cords, power strips, just an assortment okay. of um, so accessories to thing? get everything plugged in. So this will be ease of convenience on election day as well. But yeah, I know Jeanette spent quite a bit of time running it through, and then I spent some time on it too, and we couldn't find anything significantly non-compliant with it. We have a few small changes we want to make that are just preference changes, but beyond that, we really like the full pad. So. so this is tied to Secretary of State's vault of registered voters. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's kind of slick when you put the last name in and you don't can, and then you want to choose which document you're going to upload, whether it be the affidavit if they don't have ID. Mm -hmm. So then if there's some system-wide issue that affidavit or something's questioned, you could probably, I mean, you don't know who they voted for, but you could search who did we all check in by affidavit. Yep, yep. So we'll, yeah, we'll have all of that. Anything entered in there, we'll have reporting available for. So we can see who did affidavit, who did a passport versus driver's license. Now we strongly encourage the driver's license just because you can scan it. Scan it quicker. Yeah. Sure. And then do you just scan it right on the back there? Like yeah. Like code? Yeah. So, I mean, I have my driver's license, or you can really, if anyone has it. You can try to put yours yeah. on the car. Yeah. Who's got a license? I did, but I already voted. So. <laughs> You'll see me as I already voted in there. Now, whoever does it successfully has to work the poll. So is there any issues with having the Wi-Fi connection at any of the at any of the locations? Nope. Know. We currently use Wi-Fi with our Slide current poll book. Um, we don't have any problems at all. Okay. You just have right to put there. it on top like this. Oh, I see. 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 I Oh, there you are. So that wasn't it last. You're oh, legitimate, Dwayne. Absentee received. Went to vote absentee primary 2020. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. So that's what's kind of nice about us being able to put on an election that we're familiar with because we knew the quirks of, you know, 2020 primary and so we were able mm -hmm. to really get into um, some of the quirkier situations we had and make sure this was compliant with them. And as you can see, um, it stopped him from voting because he voted absentee. It will not let him proceed. Hmm. 
So you said the Help America Vote Act, Act those funds can't be used on the hardware. We will not be using yet yeah, on the hardware. We will not be using it, but we do have enough budget since we didn't have an election this year that we can just purchase the hardware. Um, and that's my recommendation. With your 2020 with money? The, yes, <coughs> with current year's um, 2021 budget. We budgeted for our election for city school. 2021 or 2020? 2021, like our budget for this year. Okay. We have a small so elections budget where I budgeted for some hardware upgrades and then for an election with every city or every school. And neither of those entities had an election this year. When you say so this year, though, that makes me think you're going to buy it now. Yeah. Okay. That's the intent of so the it's not So 2020, not 2021. It's 2021. Oh, it is 2020. <laughs> 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 you yeah, can use half the funds, though, no. or no? No, and I Only for the upgrades? I checked with Secretary of State just to double check that fact, and um, they actually hold our capital funds for us, and we cannot use it for the hardware purchase, which is this. We can use it for some programming, um, but our programming expenses are so minimal. I would like to save our HAVA funds for the next time we have a tabulator purchase, because those tabulators are over $100,000, um, and that's kind of a tough ask for a new tabulator, so we nice those grant funds are qualified for those purchases. And so you are able to accumulate them? To have a fund? Yep, and we gain interest on it as they sit there. Now in 2018, we were reimbursed for that tabulator purchase, so that was actually very nice, so we got our have a fund so <coughs> replenished, otherwise we'd be about out. Mm -hmm. Good deal. So. Thank you for keeping mm -hmm. me on. <laughs> on the date. Yeah. <laughs> <In the right year>. So do we need a motion to purchase these? Is that what you like? Or yeah, it is exempt from the bidding, but I would still like a motion. Um, I would make a motion to approve the purchase of the polling mm -hmm. equipment. We have a motion by Sub and a second by Weiss to approve the auditor to purchase no ink poll pad. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. Good job. Next we have Dirk Rogers, High Superintendent, Richmond Area Road Conversation. Hi Dirk. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, I'll say. Actually, <laughs> actually, I, I, called I was unaware of this uh, agenda item until about 815, but I called last week and asked that this be put on because uh, along the same lines as the email that Rachel sent out, I've been getting some calls from the people that live out there that were at the meeting and just wondering where we're at. And and I guess I just feel we owe them an answer of what our plan is. And my well, initial thought would be, and I'll just throw this out, if we're going to go down this road of partnering with, with residents, maybe we establish a, a mini big fund curriculum or, a, or whatever, whereby we would look at traffic counts and the total number of people that, it, that this road project would service the overall cost obviously and we've already set a precedent by doing the 50 percent up on Brown County 9 so you know we tie that to it where the residents if they want to partner would be required to come up with a certain match whether it's 50 or whatever 50 is what we used last time but that way we've got a little bit of science to justify the expenditure and there may or there may be some projects that just plain don't qualify for traffic count reasons, um, other reasons, but this way at least it would be our justification for approving that process and that project. Um, and not it wouldn't have to be overly involved, <coughs> just compile some information to see if it qualifies. I like the idea of having a, and this is kind of side note to specific talk about the roads at Richmond, but um, if we're going to go down this path, I think you need to do it you got to have some kind of parameters, some kinds of limitations. Um, and we can get into that and that. That might be one way to, to kind of curtail that. Um, so let's set that aside for a second and go to the road thing specifically. Last week, everybody but Fiker called me. Thank God. No, but everybody <laughs> else, everybody else called me at some level or contacted me about uh, basically what was in Rachel's email. Um, I haven't turned a wheel on it yet other than Cindy's getting some historical costs together out of Richmond. It, it's just, um, I'll get all that stuff put together. And uh, the other thing is I do not know, I don't even have a starting point for what a contractor would charge to do a blotter. Okay, I know what it costs the county to do it, but that's 
I, so that's going to take a little bit. I'll, I'll include what it costs us to do it, but I think for more, a better number or more realistic would be have uh, Jensen's and Lean's each give me, you know, just so we got a number. They're not like quotes or they're not bids per se. Um, so referencing specifically Rachel's email and the information that was requested in there, I'll get that together and get it to you guys either today or tomorrow in the next couple of days. Um, I, I mean, you guys, again, my most of my issues, and, I, and I've said them several times with it, um, is we don't have, I mean, we can't even get the chip sealing done now, so adding more asphalt road is not, it's absolutely counterproductive. And to keep the balance, I'm going to, have to come up with three miles to mill up somewhere else because I, it's just really tough when the whole focus for everything is trying to get the system closer to what the funding is because reality of it is, is the funding's not going anywhere, right? Unless I don't even know what it would be. I don't even know what the unless is anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to be pessimistic, but that's we, we sit and listen to people come in and talk about their taxes that don't even understand. You know, it's a half full water bed. If this one goes down, this part of the water bed is going up. It never gets more water. So that's my thing with that. When we start doing this, I, unfortunately, my job's figuring out the best way to let the road system go to hell because I know there's not enough money. As pessimistic as that sounds, that's the approach. So when we go to adding more stuff, we got to... So now, I don't think that's lost on any of you. You all know where I, I feel about that because... But so my first thought is, well, if we're going to add some new asphalt, I got to identify somewhere where we can add more gravel to make it come up even. But that's that's beside the point. Um, I could throw you out some round numbers that I'm fairly comfortable with, but I'm not going to today. I'll get it written out and, and get you something for it. Um, I'm not going to die on this hill, and I'm not going to fight you guys the whole way. If this is what you want to do, then that's fine. Um, but I, I, I think if I if I could throw yeah. in, you know, it's it's been an ongoing conversation. <coughs> People have developed properties, you know, around the lake, and you and I and we have all had the conversation about whether the county should should have been involved in some of that road system to begin with. And I think we can all agree that we're probably more heavily involved than we should have been, but we are where we are sure. with that and with some of the development, especially on the west side of the lake, and there's different people with different questions and concerns, but since we opened the door in an additional dialogue, which I think is a good thing for us to do, um, next best question that, you know, and that's, that you're talking about providing us with some good information is, if a situation came with whatever funding sources available to make some improvements to a section of road and, and for instance one of the questions that comes up is you know doing something with a hard surface from the state park for a half mile to the intersection and another half mile north to the bridge what does that cost based on water or for you know a good math hard surface and then potentially having a conversation of what options might be available for cost share if any and so I think that's the next best question you know that you're telling us that you're going to answer for us in amongst all of the, the, the philosophical and the practical conversations if it were to happen what's it going to cost and then you know we can have the conversation who if anybody is going to help pay for it if we go down that road yep. so that's you know in short the the real crux of the next question is what are those numbers so we can have that conversation wherever it goes. Yep, and, and just so you know, despite my comments, and, and, and Dwayne hit it on here, but we're hitting about three different things. So you're, we gotta have a place to start. Before I can start bitching about what we're gonna do, I gotta know where we're gonna start, right? So, and that's what you're saying, and that's a good idea. Your, your thing is a conversation we should have in parallel so that we, um, if this is gonna be a thing going forward, uh, you know, what are, are, are the, the ground the, rules? Right. What are the ground rules? Are the is this the commission? Is this going to be completely independent of the highway department budget and the commission contingency? You guys are going to throw two hundred thousand in there a year to match any potential project, because you might guess that it's going to be kind of tricky for me to to try to plan year to year within my regular framework of doing stuff if we've got all these other things getting lofted in there. Um, so. I, you know, I just yep. want you guys to understand I 
I will go wherever you take me on this, um, but you guys know where I'm at with it and why it has some challenges for me. But I think these are all valid things. Your thing, which is exactly basically what Rachel asked for, we'll get that put together in the next couple of days, and then you can go from there and have some have some decent numbers. And then at the same time, I think we got to put a little thought. I do if we're going to do this, like Dwayne's <laughs> idea, because I'm afraid what would happen in the, in the extreme case is, you know, yeah, if we're going to be having an auction. We're going to go auction off five miles of road. Who's going to pay for it? And whoever's got the most money, and you know. Well, the thing I just passed around was from eight years ago when we first did it, and we're trying to find the contract. We actually had one when we put it into that line item. I believe it was like twenty-seven thousand five hundred bucks with the private because we bumped it up from a twenty-five seventy-five county split to fifty-fifty. Um, so I think Dwayne's idea of having just a program in general, and you know, we've kind of already started down this this road. So if we don't want to go there or we want to nip in the bud and not do any more, that's fine too. But just to have the conversation, is it an option? And that was one of the biggest arguments we got. Well, then only rich people get their roads fixed. And so I think it's important that we define what the highway budget's going to be. And it's going to be a lot easier now because we have these five-year plans. Eight years ago, we weren't doing those. When I first got on the commission, we had no clue. That's kind of what I think I've told you guys a million times I got on the board because they milled up 10 and we had no clue it was coming. And it's just nice to have the communication now that, hey, yeah, this plan's going to change, but this is what it looks like in five years. So I, I like the idea of just saying, okay, what these are the parameters. It's got to be a county road, obviously. It's got to be based on road counts and science, not just emotion and <coughs> who can yell the loudest that wants their road to <coughs> so, Or um, has the deepest pocket. Right. right. So I know Kathy said she would help me and we would try to find that contract that was actually signed by um, those residents because they I had to say... I think I got... I'll, do you I'll have, have that to dig around and see. Because the other big thing is there's no future commitment, too. If you put it in for this, you know, things might change. Road counts might change. You're not saying that we're going to forever have it in this really good condition. Mm -hmm. You're putting the money in for now, not for perpetuity, you know. So. Well, that does bring up another point that I'll address <laughs> in my letter when you say perpetuity. For instance, let's say that we, it's all hypothetical, but just say we landed on we're going to blotter one, two and, a, two and a half miles out there, say from the state park, and that's what we land on. Well, two years after you bought it, you should put another one on there. Paving, you can stretch it out maybe four or five years. But two years after we do that, then the county's going to incur another $50,000 or so, you know, mm -hmm. probably, probably about fifty to, to chip seal that. So we're getting maybe 30 done this year, and if we hadn't done the microsurfacing project, which I'm going to, if that doesn't go badly, if that goes okay, that's something that I hope to continue to do to, you know, in lieu of chip sealing some of those roads is, is we'll do that. So um, that's another thing, yep. And I've seen that, I've <laughs> uh, the height road, what do, you, what do you call that one? Out past uh, the trailer park, the county country <coughs> village, and then it becomes a Lincoln Township road. Mm -hmm. I could dig out the agreement because it's somewhere, but there was some agreement back in the day where the county was going to do that, and I don't know if the end game was eventually going to be that that, Whole, I think the whole road, all the way to Road 6, eventually their thought was going to be this paved county road. And we had a, a strange hybrid situation there, and they passed the hat, and they got the road paved, and everything was fine until the road needed maintenance, and the township didn't have money to chip seal it, and they went to pass the hat again. And, what, and this, I can think of three or four examples, usually more popular in the housing developments, Pass the hat, we're going to get our road fixed, and our road's high, hard surface, and you need to do maintenance on it in five years, and everybody's going, wait a minute, I already gave you five grand the first time, with, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, and, you know, at our level, it's just kind of exasperated. So. Uh, there are 66 counties in South Dakota, and, you, and the uh, highway superintendents have got an uh, association, yep. and the county commissioners have got an association. And I'm just wondering if this idea or this concept is put on the table in front of these organizations or these associations, I mean, we're kind of, we're, I mean, are there other counties doing this? Uh, is this something that, uh, you know, maybe the counties would be and the, uh, which they tried to get the uh, state of South Dakota to do something to actually help fund, I mean, this is a funding issue. There's no question about it. It comes down to not enough money coming in to the counties 
through property tax to do the job that the counties <laughs> need to do. And we're not alone in this. The state right. of South Dakota, the 66 counties are in this in this situation. And I guess, and I've said it uh, more than once, that what we're doing is setting a, a situation where we're uh, enabling the South Dakota State Legislature to do their job and to fund education to get the general mill levy off of, <laughs> off of uh, property tax so we can fund county government to take care of the situations we've got. And I mean, I'm, I, I'm not opposed to having good roads by any stretch of the imagination, but I absolutely don't agree with the pri private sector putting one dollar into a private road because there are just m massive things that are going to erupt out of this, and you just touched on the on the main one, and that's the ongoing maintenance. They expect it to be the way it was when it's finished, and it's not going to be that way. Um, your original question there, I, I haven't heard of this. I'm not going to say that it's, you know, no one else ever does it. I, I haven't heard that. I do know there are a lot more road districts, a lot more uh, subdivision with stringent uh, Covenants, yeah. HOAs and, and things like that. I'm, I'm surprised and I think what we only have what a couple road districts in the whole county. I mean that's something that kind of surprises me out of all that stuff. Prairie uh, wouldn't cattail drive. Well Prairie was the township though. They're not even a, they're not even their uh, that's they're right. not even a road district. And uh, but I wonder kind of roll that in though. That's one of their primary responsibilities. Is I wonder the whole system. Yeah. I wonder they are taxing more for the roads though in Prairie Wood, are they? That, right. that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, all right, I don't have to go in there. <laughs> so, but, and I'm, uh, this number might be a little whack, but I, I'm thinking Pennington County has like 100 road districts. And I know uh, what Spearfish Lawrence County uh, has a bunch of road districts. Um, and that's why I've thrown that out as part of the conversation. This is kind of in lieu of or, you know, to get you to that conversation. And, and since you brought up school funding, just, you know, separate, but it's kind of like, you know, people who send their kids to private school. You're paying property taxes to fund public education, and still you're paying an extra premium because you've made the conscious choice that you want private education for your kids, so you're going to pay for that above and beyond to do that. Now, whether it's right or wrong or whatever, but, you know, the, the well, parallel. But it's sort of like a, I mean, you can, in your mind, you can think of it as a, a road district because you've got a, a collection of people that are paying into that. Yep. Um, and so you don't have just one or two people that have got that ability to have extra money. And yep. it goes back to, I think, what Rachel said, that, you know, you got you end up with a, with a little guy or the guy that doesn't have resources that's going to end up... Uh, out on the end someplace that got to put up with what's there. Yeah, and I think that's where this is a good vehicle to have the conversation about establishing a road district. You know, and, and around Richmond Lake's the perfect example because they did go through all the trouble of establishing their own sanitary sewer district sure. to take care of that as opposed to individual systems for each one of the homeowners. You know, and there's, you know, as you add new ones onto that, you know, the pros and cons of trying to, you know, capacity and and those type of things, but it's the same thing with the road district, and that gets into, you know, which Dennis brings up appropriately, you know, the life cycle cost. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what it costs to put it there, but what's it going to cost five and ten years from now when it continues to need maintenance? And if you have uh, a road district with some taxing authority, that can be built into that to continue that on to be able to maintain that at a, at a level that they have been spec, as opposed to saying, okay, we did it, it's yours now, figure it out. Well, basically, what you're doing, if you take a, a payment or, or money from private, you're obligating, if you don't have a program or a system of maintaining it after you put it there initially, you're... you made the commitment. You're, you know, you've yeah. obligated the county to, right. Uh, right. to take care of it. And but sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. For instance, up on 9, those folks were told <coughs> this $27,000 you're putting in, it's going to patch this. It might last five years. It might not. And so when we did that, you know, it's been eight years now, and we were blessed that the state came in, and it actually worked out better than it ever could have. There's a new business on that stretch, and the state came and did the next round of maintenance for us.
And it's not always going to work like that, but there's times when things do work. And to me, I'm not afraid of the, the message that it sends the legislature, because by doing this, you're at least trying to add some tools to your toolbox. And to me, it shows the sheer desperation of our residents and wanting to do everything that they can when we can't do it for them of stepping up and saying, okay, we'll partner with you. Let's get this done. And I see where you're coming from, but I just don't think that that's going to be a deal because the, the wealthiest people aren't just living in one area. For example, if you ask any of the people on County Stretch 9, I don't think any of them consider themselves wealthy. But by coming together, they can sure you know make a difference in that ne neighborhood. So. Well, I don't think we've seen the end of 9 well either. Because, oh, no. Oh, no. Not even close. And I think they're aware. Matter of fact, we might be in bigger trouble because of, of what the state has done in the fact that they've actually uh, there's a lot more major pat and I love it because I use nine a lot but I can also see some spots in there that are gonna they're gonna expect it to be the way the state made it and it ain't gonna stay that way unless the county starts to put money into it it will not stay the way it is right now well, that's any stretch though uh, you gotta put money in any that's anywhere it's well the people I mean, they, what they expect is going to be much at a much higher level than what it was prior and that's not going to happen in a lot of these situations where their people are willing to put in they're not going to somebody if the state isn't going to come along necessarily and really boost the the um, level of what that road is I mean and I and I thought you know mauled that in my mind too that's the that's not a good comparison. The biggest issue is when you compare nine. Everybody uses nine. When you look at some of the county roads at Richmond, eighty percent of the people that live in Richmond are only ones. You ever tried driving a combine or a semi through them roads out there? You couldn't get around out there with a semi or a combine. I mean, the only people that actually use those roads at Richmond are the people that live at Richmond and the visitors. It's not like you can compare that to any other county road. That should have been a road district. That's a good point. Tell us one question I had. Even if we do do, um, so going west of the state park, yeah, I mean, that's, that's got to be quite a bit of truck traffic before you go north. Would a blotter even work on that half mile, or is that just going to crumble shortly? Because isn't there quite a bit of farm ground and pasture just west? Well, you know, we did the traffic counts at a really stupid time, as I learned at that meeting. So we redid them <laughs> a week. We did them a week ago, and they went up about 40 cars. Or 40 vehicles daily. The the traffic count there's 200. Um, I mean that's not much egg type traffic at all. So going west, there's not a lot of egg going straight west. I'm not saying around the lake. I'm saying no, no. I'm with you. I'm okay. what you're saying, but so a lot of but you got to understand. My perspective is I live in Groton, right? Right. So what do you think 12E gets on it during harvest? Right. But you'll probably hear what a piece of crap that road is when we go over there for our meeting, but. Um, so I'm not discounting anybody, okay, again, but you know they raised quite an issue with the, with the traffic counts and we redid them and one place went up 25 a day and one went up 50 a day and we did them like two weeks ago. So um, okay, back to your question, I'm not worried, I, you could put a blotter in there, that's what was there. Um, I'm trying to think of another place we got blotters that aren't completely destroyed, but they're they're fine for that, it's not. Not too bad. Gotcha. I don't think anyway. You and I have had this conversation, but refresh my memory. I'll use 127th and East Shore Drive as an example. They're both part of the county system now. Correct? Right. Right. So if the desire was there to create a road district, you can't take something on the county system and have right. it become a road district. There's steps you have to go through. You have to whether it be well, abandoned and turn it back to the township and then it become a road can become a road district and in order to establish a road district you have to have the approval of every adjoining landowner the way I understand it the property owner the process that you know if the state's attorney would return my calls but <laughs> the no it, and we, we had a conversation we've had a couple conversations about trying to of trying to walk through this and I even called DOT legal and they didn't want to take the time to visit with me about it but what you're saying is correct I know that the law says you can't take something that's on the county system you can't go from being a county road to being in a road district 
Now, how you launder that situation with the county road, whether you vacate it and, and you got to have some good faith there and give it to the township and then the township vacates it and everybody would have to be on the same page here. So I don't know absolutely if that's how you do it, but when I look at the laws and, and this is where I get in trouble, but I look at the laws and you try to think through, okay, so you can't put, and, and same with the township road, you can't take a township road and have it on Monday be a township road and Tuesday it's in a road district, same thing. If they're publicly on these roads. So that's where I come up with, okay, there's got to be another way to do that. Would you vacate all of them and then they're sort of just purgatory for a little bit and then you put them into the road district. Sure. So that's the only part of that. Um, the, you said something right at the end there that all the adjoining landowners oh, or property owners would have to sign off on it. That I'm not 100% sure, but that is also something, just like vacating a road, it has to originate with the landowner. Like if you guys want to vacate a road and none of you live on it, you can't even start the process. Sure. So, there, yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure about the involvement, but there's something there with that. It seems to me when Cattail was trying to do theirs, they needed to get all the adjoining yeah. landowners. There was some out-of-state ownership. That's that right. They couldn't some reason there was a hiccup there because of the out-of-state ownership of one of the parcels along there, but I could be wrong. So you're saying that this is the adjacent landowners to the road district? These aren't folks that would be in the road district, or it is? They would have, yeah, the the adjoining, the, the road is here, the adjoining landowners oh, on either yeah, side, either side would, right, have, would have to yeah. sign on. My question right. would be whether or not all adjacent landowners or ever, everybody in that district that's created, with it would have to be a majority decision or whether or not 100% uh, participation, in other words, you're going to be taxed and right. additionally, and can the majority of the voters in that district that's created put a tax on someone that's out of state or someone that, I think what it is, everybody gets an opportunity to vote on it. Right. They don't necessarily, I mean, this is a state's attorney question, basically, right. whether or not it's a a majority rule type thing where you put the tax on everybody that's in the district or if 100 percent I can't believe that 100 percent of the people have to yeah. agree what, what applicable statutes right right yeah. dictate the, the I'm thinking that some of them have assessment things too so yeah. if you got a cul-de-sac so you got well like cattail cattail doesn't go the way around does it dead no. ends yeah so then if they did that with assessments, the guy on the end has got to pay for the whole road and the guy up at the front's only got to pay for a percentage, same way drainage ditches work. Yeah. So sometimes you see that in those, I don't know. I would like to do that at the county level, but state law doesn't allow us to do assessment processes. Right? Well, we were kind of beating this to death here, I guess, if we get some numbers. I didn't put it on the agenda. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking at the next item agenda. We're getting a little bit late into letting, letting Dave Lesby come in, so I think if you get some numbers together yeah, for us, I will kind of start that. And uh, when we talked, you had mentioned the guardrail around the bridge. That yep. is a federal that we are working with. Yeah, I mean it's we're, it's a grant program, and we're, I'm walking through that process right now. It's about I think they're 11 percent match or 10 and a half percent match. So it'd be like 25 grand it'll cost us. The one on the other side was like 250, 250. Is that something that we get done this year yet, or is it no? be done next year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well let's start with that, get some numbers and some different variants of what we want to do and we'll discuss it then. All right. Thank you. I'll just patiently wait until my agenda yeah, okay. comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <coughs> next we have Dave Lundsman update on the fat, fat tire, fat truck, vehicle purchase. He was here. He's very he was just standing there before before me. <laughs> Fat tire, that's a beer, not a truck. Right. Uh, I don't know. It was a dress flat tire, so I was like, what is this? I thought you were like, is this fat or flat tire? Flat tire. Well, you thought you were on the board. I did. Yeah. <laughs> one of the lucky ones. Tricked you, didn't they? <laughs> no such luck, right? Uh, All right. Uh, little update on the fat truck. Yes. All right. Just a quick update on where we're at. Um, I put my glasses on, I'm getting old. <laughs> so anyway, we, as we had talked before, um, and, and granted, we, since we don't have any quotes 
per se that are current. I can't give you exact numbers down to the dollar by any means. I can give you pretty close. Um, the actual cost that we guesstimated that to be about $154,000 with the amenities that, like the air conditioning, because otherwise we would cook in there, um, heat, um, winches, just the, the stuff that we absolutely thought we couldn't get without. So there's, of course, if you want to throw more stuff on there, a guy can always do that, but we didn't do that. Um, <coughs> the amount of money that we have, uh, of course, is uh, $89,000 in grants. Uh, with the donations, we had uh, $9,350 currently, which brings us uh, all with everything about $98,350. Uh, that would put us about $56,000 short at this point in time. Um, one, and I, I know I talked to Dwayne, and I think I talked to you too, Mike, is we had a, a grant uh, that we were we were pretty confident we were going to get and uh, they didn't let us know that they wouldn't allow us to have the grant because there was no money invested by the county. We tried to explain to them the county pays for the upkeep uh, but they didn't have that so we lost a, a significant amount of money. So we're I'm here to just let you know that there's another one out there that's could be sizable, uh, but I'm afraid we might be in the same same boat with that. Uh, so I'm here to let you know where we're at. And, and the process that's left is that if we were to get this, we have to have it here and on the ground by December 31st or we lose $89,000 in grants. That's just the way it works. If we don't have it, um, we just have to give the money back. Um, Will that grant be available in the future? The, the grant itself is, but for the purpose, this is the one where it's for the 10 counties surrounding us, and they have to agree <coughs> on that again. So uh, this particular money, I don't know where it would go. I don't know who would get it. It just wouldn't be us. And I don't know if they'll vote to give it to us again if we, we, we don't. I have no idea for that answer. So the, the question with the practical situation, and, and you shared that you had some difficulty with trying to, because of what you said, get some of the private donations because it doesn't look like the county's, you know, necessarily got any skin in the game. But as you mentioned, you know, we do this, we take on the commitment for Absolutely. storing it, maintaining it, doing routine maintenance and the improvements that it needs, which is a substantial commitment on the part of Correct. the county. But people are looking, you know, at the front end of this. You know, Correct. What are you putting in on the front end of it? And so my question is, what would a uh, substantial contribution from the county look like? Are we talking about ten thousand dollars? Are we talking about twenty thousand dollars? What? Well, each place is different. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, uh, ten thousand is significant. Well, which it is. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money. In other cases, twenty is is significant. It depends on who we're talking to, and the the. The sad part about the one we lost is that they did not tell us ahead of, ahead of time. Um, that one, their investment in this would have been very, very substantial, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of money we lost. Uh, I wish they would have let us know we could have done something ahead of time, but they did not tell us until after they had dis the money distributed. That's just the way it, it went, and we had no choice in that. Uh, uh, I think we've been through this uh, probably two or three times, but the, the reason that we went for this particular vehicle, although an extremely expensive vehicle, no doubt, I get that. Um, as I talked to, to Mark, he brings us back to that 96 season where he bought the, the Humvee, which we still have. It's uh, been a very good investment, uh, obviously a lot cheaper investment than this by many standards. Uh, we went through a couple winters, not last winter, two winters ago and three winters ago, where we, we actually rescued 100 people in one day. Uh, it was difficult. Our Humvee was stuck overnight on one of those rescues. We had one of our deputies stuck in a snowbank for five hours. Uh, thankfully, had plenty of fuel. Uh, this, is an, this is one of those things, if we hadn't thought that this was the next generation of being able to save people and get to where we need to go. Um, 
we wouldn't have asked, we wouldn't have put in for this, we wouldn't have had to try to, for something this expensive. Uh, where we're at right now is we still have to bid, even though there are really no competition in, in these matters. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have to put out the bids. We have to get those unsealed. We have to move forward and be able to order it. Uh, what the backlog is, minimum of six weeks. That's bare minimum. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be a little longer with all of the vehicle issues. You know, we see all these vehicles that are not being able to be made because of parts. So we're not sure exactly what, what the delay in that's going to be. Uh, so that's why we're hoping that if nothing else, uh, that the county would fit something, but also allow us to go forward with at least with the, the getting our bids out there, see what what the final price will be, so we can at least be one step ahead of the law game. Has anyone else in South Dakota bought one of these? Yes. Ooh. Pennington County bought one, and they were, um, they did so well with it, they bought a second one. Now, granted, they do have some different terrain. They have a pretty large area they cover for the whole west. Even though they cover not just Pennington County, they go, <coughs> their search and rescue teams go far and wide. But they bought two similar vehicles. Yes. One for city and one county, or both county, or what? Both county, they're, county. they're a search and rescue team through the county. And nobody in the east has <coughs> they bought one yet. Correct. That are not that I'm aware of, anyway. I was just looking at 56, just kind of hard to stomach that through general funds, but if there's 10 counties, obviously we're probably one of the bigger of those counties that could maybe do six to 10,000, but would the other step up? Because I'm assuming that the grant money is just grant. They have authorized us to use their piece of the grant, but nothing right. in like actual cash from right. the county. Yes, Has correct. that conversation happened? Are they willing to? Well, we threw, threw the, the um, thought out at our last meeting. Um, a lot of these counties are no different than, yeah. than Brown County. They're all tight for cash, too. Yeah. Did we press anybody? No. Yeah. I can't say it. Be. A lot of those guys can't make those decisions anyway. They're not commissioners. Sure. So uh, it's difficult to, you know, and their, their budgets are really, really tight. It has to come from the commission. Well, I know that you guys have been working hard at this, and it's tough to go back to the well a second time, but just for instance, if the county were to put in $20,000, do you think it's reasonable that you could get within that time frame? find sources for the difference then? I, I do believe that. so. We, we still have one, we hope to be a fairly large donor coming back in the next week to two weeks. Um, they said after the fourth is what they told us. Um, that could be a very significant Some donation. Some places work off a of mid-year fiscal year and different stuff. Well, they have an actual fund for these types of things, so they can, they meet with their, their committees every so often, and they said they were going to meet after the 4th, and then they would make a decision. Uh, we still have two or three fairly good places. I don't know what the dollars are. It, you know, mm -hmm. they, they well, well, you don't know, especially if there's a committee and they're making decisions based on that, um, you know, the perception and the, the reality of the county was putting 20 plus the grants that we do know are available within a certain time frame if that would make a difference in right. you know what that decision might be not what it you know would be if right that would be enough to shift the perception to say you know the county is in on this you know even though we are you know agreeing to own it and maintain it for as long as it's around right well I don't see any problem with authorizing the, to put out the bid I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean we're tied into anything. At least we would know what we're looking at for dollars. Is it going to be 154? Is it going to be 164? I mean, the way these vehicles have changed in the last six months, this thing could be 200,000 by now. I mean, it's just nuts how this has all changed. I really hope that's not the case. Well, but I, I think it's not. I think that <laughs> would, I mean, it wouldn't make any difference what we're talking here if we don't know what we're trying to purchase on the other end. So I right. think we need to find that out. So I don't have a problem with put it out there and seeing, hey, what does one of these things cost now versus what it was when we started this? So was there any commitment from any of the other counties as far as the dollars? That I mean, just their um, part of the grant. Okay. Uh, they gave portions of their grant to us okay. for this vehicle, um, foregoing some of their wish list for this, yes. Where does the grant come through? Is it a federal? It, it is actually federal money, but it's distributed through the state, and then it's... So through EMS, then? It, yeah, it, it is. 
Homeland Security. Right. Okay. Which each the state picks each, and they mm. figure out per area. Yep, they do a camp a computation, um, and then they divide within those ten. So where would the county right now? Let's just hypothetically say that we agree to this. Where would the county in 2021 come up with 50, 65,000 out of contingency? Um, where would we come up with the money for it? Right, right now, I think um, my ask. Now, granted, I, I, I appreciate that, and I think that, that you guys probably should have those conversations. But today, I, I, I think for us to be able to keep going forward on getting donations and stuff, a, a commitment from you guys of something and then leaving the rest open for us to be able to, to work with would be the best idea, I'm afraid. Um, and I'm just going to be straight up, is that if, if you guys gave us all right now, then our, our being able to get money from other donations will probably just dry up. Because they'll say, you, you got it. Um, so really, I'm looking for something to tempt other people to give us some more money and make this really get the community involved with this and I still think we can do that. Maybe that, maybe Doug, uh, the chairman's um, idea here might be uh, how quick I wonder would be a turnaround on the bid. There's only a couple companies that made these, right? Correct. Yeah. So we'd have to do uh, the hearings or, or whatever, mm -hmm. the posting. Yeah, we so do our regular bid process unless it's on like Sourcewell or one of those. Um, companies. I really doubt it with this. Uh, it's such a specialty machine. There, are, There's uh, what our bid went out to truly what at that time was only one company that okay. could fit within the parameters of, of bidding actually. So, so it would be the time frame I guess. About a month from the date the time we set hearing we can have our bid opening to see what it costs. You're a sole source supplier you don't even have to bid it. There's no one else that has it. We're, we're unaware of any other company that has it. Yeah, it's totally unique design. It's yeah, if it is sole source, we can go that route. We need documentation and put that in. Right. But the gist of what you're saying is the county needs to make a financial commitment in order to get us over the hump on finding additional funding sources Correct. rather than the, the county just writing the check yes. for the difference. And we need to make that commitment so you can work those relationships to get that done. Correct. Are the uh, other 10 counties committing general funds as well? Not at this point, so no. I mean, if each of them committed like 10,000, that'd get us a long way. Uh, like I said, I, I can't, that, that'll come from the commissions from those. We, we were speaking with people in positions like mine and EM, EMs mm -hmm. and stuff, which none of us have the ability for money. Right. Has the city been approached as far as a contribution? The city, uh, we've t we've talked. Um, if the county made a commitment, would there be a pot more <coughs> chance that the city would commit to something? I'm sure um, they probably will. Um, here's 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 one of the issues that always seems to come up, and I'm not bashing the city. Uh, it's probably not a good point on my part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to talk in generality. When when you share share a vehicle or something like this, somebody wants to or needs to own it, take care of it, maintain it, be in charge, be in charge of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the bigger the donation from other entities that want to use it, they will also want to claim. Yes. Claim and, and that becomes an issue. It, it just does. And it, it's not bashing. Our, it, it's anywhere you go in the state, the city, the communities, it always becomes one of those is it yours or mine or or it got put back without fuel and who didn't do that and who didn't who broke this well I don't know we always always have that we have that with within the sheriff's office sometimes somebody breaks something nobody knows anything about how it got broke um, and I don't want to get into a poor relationship of doing that not that we can't do that and maybe that's an option later but I, I'm always afraid of that well, being that there's a specialty vehicle and we probably don't have to have a number of bids go out because there's only one company, can you call the company and say, hey, is this still the approximation of this price? We can. I think Absolutely. that we need because, I mean, I'm sure these things have gone up just like... And give us a date, hold it, I mean, to a specific time, whether it's November 1st or December 1st or whatever, this is what we with the county 
this is what we've got, this is what the county would be committed to. Yeah, a lot so of this stuff thinking, out there is end of October and then it's... Yeah. 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 That's why I say first end of October. Given the state of the current budget situation being, you know, where we are, if we were to want to commit, let's say, $20,000, where would we take that from? Is We'd have we surplus cash to cover the expense or contingency, which comes from the mm -hmm. budget of four, but there's also plenty of surplus cash. Have we spent anything out of contingency at all? Not this year, no. Yeah. We typically do that at year end to see who needs it. Mm -hmm. um, we typically don't spend a whole lot of contingency. But right. Well, I think if the county was to put funds out for twenty grand, for instance, there'd be a stipulation as far as somebody else would meet the balance. Because I don't know, the county wants to get stuck for fifty-six thousand, or sixty-six thousand, or seventy-six thousand. If there's no other donations and this thing goes up another ten, fifteen grand, I don't know that the county should be responsible for seventy-six thousand of the. Right. You know that that'd be my concern. If we're if we're committing twenty grand, that twenty grand is committed upon the fact that some of these other donations come through also because the next thing you know not sure 20 is enough. our 20 turns into From 60 America. or 80 and I don't think we want to go down that road well if you do the math 20,000 and I'll use 154 because that's the only number we have right 20,000 would be about 14 uh, percent 13 percent of the total 25 would be closer to 17 percent between 16 and 17 still a fairly small percentage of the overall cost which we already have close to 90 in, in a grand, 80, 80 we, whatever it was. Yeah. So a twenty or $25,000 investment, I think, would show good faith on our part and maybe entice other entities to step up and, and either increase the amount they've already given or consider giving more before before the fact. But now when I called last week and asked that this be put on the agenda again, I, I knew the struggle that you guys were having with meeting di or deadlines and, and you know those kind of things and the challenges you're facing with some of the asks not coming through at quite the level we were hoping for. So right. I, I just think the county needs to have a serious discussion on how much we're willing to commit to and maybe that will entice others to give more. So, right. Maybe we are better off just up front doing a bigger amount and then let the city or somebody else take care of storage maintenance. If there's well, somebody that was interested, that would probably... I mean, something I probably shouldn't even bring up, but how are we going to transport this thing to McPherson County? Have we got a trailer big enough to load it on to haul it? Well, we I mean, do, if we... That, that's what's in this bid, too, is, is a trailer. Okay. Um, but that's part of the, the bid process is with a trailer. So it's a unit, in other words. Right. It comes with a trailer transport. So that's we got a vehicle big enough to pull it? Yes. Um, actually, uh, the, the heavier half tons will actually pull it. This thing is, is not as heavy as you think it is. It's still not light, but a car trailer. Basically, you're pulling a car okay. is what you're doing. And it's, it's, not over, it's not yes. over width that it will fit onto a car trailer. Okay. Correct. Okay. It's like a big Tonka truck with three big wheels. I've seen it out at uh, <laughs> Pump's Tire. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. We're sitting out there, looked at it. Well, the number I guess I was it had in the back of my mind as a show of good faith amount would be twenty five thousand dollars. I think that way we're closer to the one fifty four or whatever that number ends up being and if we're not able to come up with the additional money by the deadline and not able to commit then we're not out anything but at least we've made the commitment. So that was the number I was kinda of toying in the back of my mind. Is that a motion? I would make that motion that the county commit twenty five thousand dollars for this purchase for this vehicle if we're able to secure the additional funds necessary. Second. We have a motion by Sutton, a second by Weiss to have the county put funds of 25000 towards the fat truck on the stipulation that the donations would handle the balance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion Aye. approved. Thank you. We'll give you an update as soon as I know more. Appreciate that. Good luck. I know you've been spending a lot of time on this. It's not like you don't have anything else to do. <laughs> yeah, the plate's been full. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Thank Appreciate you. it. Care. It worked the way it was, not it? <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> 
Next I I do we have it like Dirk Rogers, once again, popular as can be today. Michael yeah. Michael off for something, Dirk. <laughs> Department updates and we have some uh, right of ways. Okay, the same story as last week with the right of ways. I made another map. There's eight different documents. Um, <coughs> I better keep looking at it here. And look at, look at where we're working. And his own. That was last week. So these are just all the exact same thing. Update and existing. Nothing's new. Just going in where the old copper line is and putting fiber in. They're all for Northern Valley. And number one starts up there on the north side of the where the gravel or actually starts at the North Bridge. Goes down, goes into the Beagler Road, and goes a mile, a little over a mile south. Um, let's see, let's see, two. I believe two is just on 12W, same thing, but mm -hmm. goes a, mile, a couple miles over there, there. Uh, that is 19. And this is also part of that one. It's just another spot on six. Just like I was telling you last week, there's gaps in there because they feed it from the mm -hmm. other direction. And you just move over here. They're doing Country Village Road. Uh, see, you know, he's looking at the kind of looks funny upside down. Dakota Street looks like the mile between, uh, the mile just west of Prairie Wood. You know, just all these areas on here. If you guys have a question about specific ones, I move them all. Well, well, um, thank you for the visual. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, familiar. I've got to go. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Second. I'll second the motion. Um, my curiosity in that yep. is that do you is there a specific document or <clears throat> I guess for lack of a better way to put it, proof to the county? And I guess one of the things that comes to mind is when the um, contractor dug through the the uh, berm up on the north side of town on uh, north of Holgate up there, let's say that they don't cut into one of those uh, uh, lines and, and tore it off, is the uh, county, uh, is there any way that the county is held liable if the construction, because we're approving this, right. mm -hmm. is there any way that the county would be held responsible to fix it back up if a contractor or or the city or somebody went through yeah. one of those lines and tore it open. Do we have documentation that says that the utility company that puts it in is going to pay for the repair after it's put there? Yeah, it's, it's uh, state law for one, okay. explains all that. Also, when you get the original handout, now a company like NBC, the same right away guy has been doing it for 18 years, so he probably doesn't get the, he's just printing these out off of his thing. But there's a sheet that goes with it that it, that explains what our expectations is, what our expectations are relative to where the placement is, and what the condition of the ditch is afterwards. Um, See, I mean, I'm not questioning no, the, no, the intent or where it's put, but I mean, sometimes if those, and I guess an example that comes to my mind is out on uh, 13 <laughs> West. Well, it'd be just a, half, a mile west of, or half a mile west of the road that goes up to the West Bridge where the one of the county yield signs was uh, in the shoulder of the road literally on top of the uh, fiber optic line and just through the motion of the wind moving that sign cut through that fiber optic line and you know you never know what those contractors are going to do and they pull out and where they go right. I mean, they might be told by the documentation where it's supposed to be, <coughs> but it ends up being someplace else because the guy that, that signed that or worked with that isn't out there to watch the contractor where he puts that line. Right. Um, that's, well, where that's where you're, when you're placing additional resources and you got to have the locates done. Yeah. Um, well, my point is that the intent of the location and where it actually ends up might, oh, it might not oh, always yeah. be the same. Oh, yeah. It absolutely is. No, and uh, um, Webb Web is the ones that were the geniuses because they put the line in and then said the easement's either side of the line five feet. The easement was dictated by where the line went. And in 1980, whatever, the commission, this board gave, not you guys fortunately, but gave them a blanket permit to just put it in. Everybody wanted water, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But, and then wherever the pipe ended up, that's where the easement went. It was tied to the as-built. 
Right. Well, that's pretty crappy, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, though, Dennis, like, if we're going to go out, they, they put this in and we're going to go out and regrade Road 9, which don't get excited that it's going to happen. <laughs> but, it, but if we did and this had the line in there, they just got to move it out of the way. And it's totally at their cost. Now, I know that this this particular project has churned up some, some local discussion. Uh, you guys... You, you guys, when I'm in here talking about this, you're only approving stuff on county roads. I make it very specific to NBC that these the county roads, I'll even call them and go, hey man, you got two extra miles on here that are a township road that's not a county road. So we didn't approve that. Well, when um, the city takes over some of these roads, they need to be taken over that are adjacent to and next to the city, and there's this fiber optic line on there, and they yeah. make improvements. Is that's the county going to be held no, responsible? No, no, no. But we're not... We got nothing. I mean, that's. I'm trying to think of a scenario. If there was a county-owned utility somehow, like we had a water line going through, but they're all. I mean, we kind of have to let them in there, but that's the trade-off. Is they have to get out of the way when we need them to. The only time that I haven't been able to move a utility is the high-pressure gas line underneath the, the road that we built going up to the uh, landfill. That gas line runs underneath there, and you sh that they're still laughing from the day when I called them in 2002 and asked them to move that pipeline because <laughs> it was in the way of our road project. <laughs> so, but that was a that's an extreme example. Now, if that had been life or death, and there was no other friggin' option at all, then we probably could have got them to move that. But so, I, I've I have never had trouble moving utilities out of the way of something at all. You've got some of them that tie onto a bridge and things yep. like that, as opposed to going through a channel. And if you replace the bridge or have to do things, it's their responsibility yep. to get out there and move them. But you, it's, you need to have documentation or approval when you're sticking all those yep. resources in the ground, so you can at least try and keep track of them. Yep. And and uh, really, the they're supposed to give us a, a input or what do you call that? Uh, oh my God. Design. Yeah. No, but the uh, built. Oh my God, I'm just blacking out there. The the way they built it, they give you a as built. Geez, yeah. that's what I was looking yeah. for. As built. They're supposed to give us an as built. Well, they don't do that every time. But if I call out for web right now, or I call anybody that's got a GIS, they'll tell me where where the lines are. So I I just don't recall ever really having trouble. Now you had to wait for them. You know, sometimes you got to wait and change the schedule, but. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because when we was doing this out of school 40 years ago, we'd have designs for when we put telephone cable in the ground and it would be you know a straight line and then it would be a 90 degree angle over to a pedestal and back out. And we'd have these guys on the cat that would you know angle right up to the edge you know in a big right away. It's like you can't be doing that. You're gonna just drive everybody nuts in the future doing that. So yeah, we're long as we to go we actually check us for those kinds of situations. Yeah. We got a motion from Kipling, a second from Fiker to approve all eight right of ways for NBC. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. I'm still not charging for them. Sorry, I'm not dragging it out. Good question. Um, Next, we have the updates. Yeah, the, not a lot since I last talked to you. We got done up at. Uh, Claremont, as I said, and got transitioned down. And we were going to shoot oil today, but we've been going through this long rainy stretch now. That's really <laughs> <laughs> really late. Yeah, yeah it really set us back. But no, no, we're uh, we're getting the road 11 ready. Basically today, I don't know if we'll actually get mixed down tomorrow or or Thursday, but we'll probably get a little something started up there this week. We should be up there a couple weeks, then we're going to go down. we got to pave a little bit down uh, east of, or west of uh, Fernie. And then we're going to probably do a little chip sealing and regroup and see what kind of money I can scrape up and go up to Hecla and do a little something up there, see what we can get done. So that's sort of the big picture. Uh, that microsurfacing project should be starting this week. I, know they had a little trouble down in Lincoln County where they were working. Um, so originally I think they were supposed to start tomorrow, but we'll see if, if they got up here, if the rain affected them or anything. They did a nice job up to Prairie Wind over. Yeah, wasn't that nice? <laughs> <coughs> but, uh, now, yeah, but you know what, I, I just look at it and that's $900,000 basically we got there from the state. and. Um, 
yep, I'm going to have some truck traffic on there. And instead of being a brand new road, we're going to get about a 95% road then when the when it's done getting used as a detour. But boy, that's nice, and the striping's finally all squared away. Mm -hmm. And yep, so it is much better. Yep, that's that's one way to. One way to get a grant, I guess. But I have caught wind of a little bit of concern about the noise with the trucks coming in from the west. That prairie wood breaking. Yeah, I am supposed to put up some more signs. I'm also supposed to move there after it was already by time, so I've got those calls too. Well, they mm -hmm. didn't want it the way it was. They want anything to change. Things change. Well, there's judicious use of that. I mean, they're, they're yeah. equipped for a purpose, but. Yeah, it's, it, if you look at big picture things, I mean, you can almost predict where that's going to happen because that's why it was a desirable location and that's why it was desirable to put something up there and that's why there was two major roads coming there and, I mean, it's all yep. it's all for the same reason. Things evolve. Yeah. All right. Thank okay. You. Thanks, Jared. I'm going to make a photocopy of that one sheet that we passed around because oh. I don't have... You want it back then? Yeah, I'll just send that one out. Thank you. I will look. I, I know I've seen something because it's got those folks up there's names signed right. on. Yeah. Thanks, sir. You bet. You guys have a great day. You, you too. Too. Thank you. Anything else come before the commission? Okay. Did Eric uh, have anything for us? Not that I'm aware of. We do have a budget work session today, first round of meeting meetings. Uh, yeah, we just recess? Yeah. No, we'll adjourn. We put them on the agenda. It is open to the public, but we don't need to be in a session. Just a work session. Move to adjourn. Got a motion by Sutton, a second by Kipley to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?